Good morning out there. Uh, we love to have you joining with us here at New Beginnings House of Worship as we come to worship alive in a living God. We thank you for taking a little time out of your day to be with us and to share with us. Um, we come this morning uh, with our hearts filled with joy as we uh, get into this celebration of Independence Day. Um, we, uh, we're here uh, celebrating with my aunt who turned 90 and we just thank God for that and had a little time with family. But before we get into all of that, we're going to ask uh, Sister Rosalind Turner to come as she always does and welcome you into this worship experience. Sister Rosalind. Good morning, everybody. Thanks again for joining us here at New Beginning House of Worship. Thank you for, once again, for taking out part of your day to worship and then see what thus says the Lord. And we pray that there's something will be said that will enlighten your week and be a uh, something that you can just take along with you this week and will strengthen everything that you will be going through. Have a blessed day. Be safe out there. Happy 4th of July. And happy birthday to my sister who's enjoying her 4th of July um, birthday down in Orlando, Florida today. So have a great day, you all. Amen. Amen. And so we know that there are several celebrations and all going on. Um, but we know that with our first celebration is to celebrate the fact that God loves us and that he is always there for us. And so as we come to worship God in spirit and in truth this morning, we encourage you uh, to get your Bibles out and just share in what all the blessings God has for us this day. So we're going to be coming this morning from the book of Proverbs uh, for our scriptural text this morning, uh, Proverbs. And we're going to be coming from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 through 15. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 through 15. Uh, we were blessed to be able to do a series a little while ago on wisdom. And so we wanted to capture some of that, uh, those Bible study lessons and share that with you this morning. And so if you have your Bibles out, I always uh, use the King James Version most of the time. Uh, but whatever version of the Bible you have with you, uh, share that and we ch get that out and we will uh, worship our uh, God together. Proverbs chapter 2 verses 10 to 15. And we want to give a shout out to all our family here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, as we are here celebrating and again, as my wife mentioned, my uh, sister-in-law in, in Augusta, Georgia has her birthday today. And there's a couple others out there that I don't have written down. But God bless you all. So here, our message for today, Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 through 15, and it reads, When wisdom enters into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaks forward things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths. Amen. And so we just like to leave for a thought today Wisdom is the better way. Wisdom is the better way. And so, uh, so I typically like to do, I like to leave you with a biblical truth that if you don't get anything else out of this message, that uh, you can at least grasp this and uh, take this on with you throughout the week. And that is uh, that wisdom will always lead you in the right direction. Wisdom will always lead you in the right direction. And so when we think about wisdom, you know, there's the wisdom of the world. And we're not speaking of that wisdom that will always lead you in the right direction. Uh, wisdom of the world can get you some places, but it's not going to get you where God wants you to be. And to be have the right relationships, not only with him, but with their uh, fellow man. And we're having a lot of issues in the world today that we can't seem to get along with each other. Uh, for uh, the reasons that Satan is always trying to convince us that there's something better out there than what God has for us. So when we think about wisdom, uh, 
will always lead us in the right direction. You have to have wise counsel. You have to listen to people that know something that has been through some things. And so when we think about that wise counsel, it always comes from the word of God. And so that's something that you can count on that would lead you in the right way. Now, there are some things that sometimes people say, well, you know, uh, the word of God is, is too strict. It doesn't let you have any fun. It says, no, that's, not, that's only because the evil one has convinced us that there's something better out there and there isn't. He's been doing that from the beginning of time. So even when we look at the first sin, when we look at what happened in Genesis chapter two, uh, verses 15 through 17, when, when uh, Satan, Hasatan, the adversary, uh, the one that is a, a liar, he's described as a liar and a deceiver. Uh, when that person comes along, uh, he, he came in and told them uh, to uh, try the fruit of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Eve told him, God said that this, we are not to eat of that. Because of the day that we do, we will surely die. And he says, you won't surely die. And that's, that's the, the, the plan and the plot of the adversary, to constantly tell us that what God said is not true. What God said is, is, not, uh, is not as bad as he says it out, makes it out to be because God is trying to hide something from us. <laughs> now, why would God who created us and placed us in the midst of his creation and gave all of that to us, why would he try to hide something from us that if it wasn't, uh, if it was good for us? God only keeps us from those things that are not good for us. And so we have to have wise counsel to understand what God is saying. And so uh, Satan, uh, his, his ploy was to get us to see that there's something better out there other than what God has for us. And isn't that true in our lives that <clears throat> when we are trying to do right, when we give our life to the Lord, that, uh, that, that voice comes to us and tells us that we're not good enough? Uh, you still have some issues going on in your life. Uh, he tries to convince you that uh, the things that you're still doing, you see, you, you were doing that long time ago, and now you're just doing the same thing. And so God doesn't, doesn't like that. You know God doesn't like this. God doesn't like that. And so how is it that Satan can convince us of those things when he didn't follow what God was doing? That's why he's in the state that he's in now. <laughs> and we don't need to follow in his path. So when we look into this text, of Proverbs chapter two, verses 10 to 15. There's a lot of nuggets in here uh, that we want to do, we want to, to touch on. Uh, the first thing that we have to be able to do though <clears throat> is to be able to resist the devil. Uh, because again, as I mentioned, that, that was the first thing that he did was to tempt us to do other than what God asked us to do. And scripture tells us that there's no temptation that's, that comes upon us that's not common to all men. But God will, with every temptation, provide a way out, a way of escape from that temptation. So don't get um, distraught. Don't get upset when temptation comes your way. Uh, don't let it play around in your mind. And if it gets up in there and it stays in there too long, rebuke it. Use God's word to rebuke it. And if you don't have a particular scripture, just tell them to get thee behind me, Satan. But we use God's word to fight that off. So you need to find that scriptural text. And so when we do that, we have to understand what, what God has for us. So James 4 through 7 tells us to submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you can run him off. But we, what the problem is, is that we don't always know a scripture to use. So we need to start, and if you need to start somewhere, start in Psalms or Proverbs. And then just start thinking of the things that you struggle with. And, and, and Google it. Do, it. do a search. If you have a Bible that has a, uh, uh, it's a study Bible, you can go into the back and find uh, the various topics that may affect your life. To use those things and to find those scriptural texts that you can use to resist the evil one. Because he's, he's coming, he's always gonna try to do it. He tempted Jesus, and so he, if he tempts Jesus, he's gonna try to tempt us as well. So how did Jesus fight him off? With the word. We have to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. See, we can't come up with a way <clears throat> to fight off what Satan has against us, They'll try to bring up against us. When we try to do it our own way, we always make some mistakes because we think we can outsmart Satan, <laughs> but he's cunning. 
He's cunning. And so we have to use the word and allow that to be our strength. Amen. <clears throat> so when we look into this text today, excuse me, it says, when wisdom enters into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. So we want to look at a couple of things here. Wisdom, now, when it enters into your heart, when you really begin to seek out wisdom and try to understand the things that are going on in the world, things that are going on in your life, what are the things that God really wants from you? What is it? What are his expectations? Then when you allow wisdom to come into your heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Here's the other thing. Sometimes we want uh, the wisdom of God, but we don't want to know everything that God tells us to do. Because if I know that this isn't right and God says, don't do this, then I might not have the kind of fun I want to have. I'm going to be deprived of something somehow. And that's, again, the evil one convincing us that God's way is not the right way and it's not the best way for you if you want to enjoy life. He has, Satan has never given us something that is enjoyable for our life, our lifelong life, uh, that, that was pleasant and something that did us good. Now, you're going to say, well, preacher, no, that's not true because there's some things he gives you that's good, but it's only good for the moment. Anything that's good and only lasts for a moment or for a particular point in time is not good for you or for anyone else. And so we have to be careful not to accept some things for, for uh, temporary happiness and then find out that in the long run, that we're going to have long-term sadness. And you can look in your own family relationships. You can look at that as a, as, as a key. We know that there are some things and some people have said some things and we may have said some things back or we may have started it. And then now we have families that are still torn apart 10, 15, 20 years ago because of something someone said out of turn. Amen. Amen. So when wisdom enters into thine heart, when you are really ready to seek God's direction and his, his discretion in our life that he will give us, uh, we have to have wisdom, be willing to receive it in our heart, not in our head. Because uh, we can try to understand and, and have all the wisdom in the world, read all the books in the world. There's a scriptural text that, that, that um, and I can't remember where it's from, but it says um, uh, that we have to put off all of the reading of books because we need to get and put what we know into action. Uh, too much reading of books can, can be detrimental to us because we're reading this book, reading that book, and we think we know it based on what that author says in that book and not trusting what God has said. And so that's, that's a hard thing for me to deal with because as an educator, as a person who loves uh, the educational process, uh, I have to understand exactly what God is meaning. He's not saying don't read, but he's said, telling us too much reading. Reading of books constantly can be a problem to you uh, if you're only trusting in what those books say and you're not putting anything into action. Amen. So wisdom enters into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto you, unto thy soul. Again, we get knowledge from uh, not only reading books, but listening to others. So one of the things that we need to be able to do is to have a good mentor, a good uh, Bible-believing church, someone that can come along and actually uh, teach us what thus saith the Lord. Uh, because when we do that and we allow God's Word uh, and we get close to God's Word, and, and uh, you know, sometimes in life we have the Mary Martha syndrome. Sometimes we're so busy doing some things and we're trying to do it for a good reason, such as preparing a meal for all of the guests that are there and it needs to be done, that we miss out on the, the teaching of God's word. We can do that in the church. We can be so concerned about the flow of the program and the, uh, who's what the choir is singing and all of this, that when the preacher's preaching, we're thinking of all these other things and distractions that's going on that we don't really hear the word. And sometimes, especially on special days, uh, we're so busy preparing then for the, the feast afterwards that we miss out on the word. Now, that, does that mean that you don't prepare? No, but we have to have some priority. Martha, Mary and Martha had that situation. Uh, one sat at Jesus' feet and listened, which was a strange thing in those times <clears throat> for a woman to be sitting at the feet of the master. 
but this new, new religion, this new uh, religious form of worship was was being born, and that being that the uh, the old ways of the separation of the men here and the women there, the Gentiles here, the Jews here. No, we're all in this thing together now, <clears throat> and so we come together to worship God. So we have to have wisdom, have the desire to receive wisdom, and we have to have the uh, desire for knowledge when we really want to know what God is saying to us. And then guess what will happen? Discretion shall preserve thee. That's one of the first things, discretion. Um, being able to understand what's going on, being, knowing, uh, being able to know how to respond, being able to know how to um, react to situations. Discretion to tell you that, <clears throat> you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to say anything about that right now. I'm going to get this person and pull them aside because right now we're in a, in a group of people and they're saying some things and they're responding and acting away. I could just go on and say some things right now, but it might hurt them. Discretion tells me, no, I'm going to pull that person aside and talk to them. You know, the, the world will tell you, no, you need to go on and tell them right then because they said it in front of everybody. You need to say it. No, discretion tells you when's the right time to do something. It gets the process of letting you know when and how to say something. Because there are some truths that are out there and we can use them to beat somebody over the head with or we can use them to heal someone and to bring them up. And so uh, if we trust what God is saying, he will give us discretion because discretion will preserve thee. It will keep you. Uh, you know what a, a good preserve would do? A preserve is something that will stay and will keep and you can keep it for a long time. Uh, whether you're making preserves, that's one thing, or whether you're preserving some meat. Uh, and so we've salt it down. We do different things to the meat, uh, and we may dry it out so that you can carry it with you for a long time. That's where the jerky came from. They would dry it out, and sometimes they would salt meat down. They, they still salt hams down because that salt will preserve it and keep it from decaying and, and uh, going bad. And so that's what discretion does for us. It keeps us and preserves us. And not only that, but understanding shall keep thee. Scripture tells us <clears throat> that there is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. With all that getting, get understanding. Uh, and so we need to have understanding because understanding will take that knowledge that you have and that wisdom that you, you've obtained and tell you how to use them. <laughs> and that's where the discretion comes in. See, God has this thing all figured out and he's telling us how to do this thing. But we want to do it our own way sometimes. Uh, we, we don't understand, well, if I have wisdom, that's enough. If I have knowledge, that's enough. If I have understanding, that's enough. Maybe if I just had the two of them and not three of them. But God's saying they all three work together. And so when we have that understanding, uh, don't you wish some people understood you when you were trying to do some things? When there were some things in your life, even when you didn't do it right, that you were trying to do something right and that people understood you, that they could give you the right uh, guidance? Now, the, one of the problems in society today is that we don't want people to tell us to do something other than what we want. If it's something that I'm planning to do, we want people to always agree with that and just, just support me in that and, and so that I can go on. And I understand that. You know, we, we need to give people support and allow them to make mistakes, but we don't want you to make mistakes that, we're, that you're gonna fall into a hole and a mistake that can be devastating that will not preserve you. And so that's what God's word will do. It would lead you in the right path. Now, it's okay to make mistakes and to learn from those mistakes. That's how we, that's the best way we learn. Uh, David didn't become uh, a man after God's own heart by doing everything right. He made mistakes along the way. But when Nathan came to him and informed him of his problem, then he got his life together. He started getting his life together. Uh, and so uh, we all have those situations where we've made some mistakes along the way. But if we allow uh, wisdom to enter our heart and knowledge and, and follow that discretion that God has given to preserve us and we allow understanding to come in, it will keep us. Not only will discretion keep us, but understanding shall keep you. Why? What, will it do? what is it for then? Look at verse 12. It will do so to deliver you from the way of the evil man. 
That's what we're talking about. Hasatan is always trying to lead us down the, the path of uh, unrighteousness, the adversary. He's always trying to get us to do something other than what God will have us to do. It says, wisdom, knowledge, discretion, and understanding will keep us and deliver us from the way of the evil man. Now, we have to understand this, and we all share this with you all the time, so you should know this. Um, uh, the scriptural text in, in Ephesians. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, uh, the rulers of darkness. And so we shouldn't get all upset at the individual, the person. Uh, Jesus had to uh, get Peter straight. And he rebuked Satan because Satan was trying to use Peter to get him not to go down the path that he was going. And so Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. But what did he say to Judas? Judas was the one who was betraying him. Uh, so Jesus knew how to get rid of Satan, the evil one, and resist him because he was using Peter to do something. But when it came to, to, to uh, Judas, who was trying to, um, Satan was using to uh, have Jesus uh, captured and, and, and destroyed, uh, murdered, uh, then Jesus said to him, uh, when he came to kiss him, he said, go, my friend, and do what you must. Uh, he called him friend because he was leading him on the path that he was called here for. Whether he knew it or not, Judas really didn't know and understand what he was doing, uh, the, the full extent of what he was doing. But guess what? Judas had the opportunity to be saved, but Judas went down the wrong path and hung himself. Peter, on the other hand, he got upset after, he, after Jesus' death, and he realized the thing. He knew it immediately when the cock crew, that he had rejected Jesus. But guess what Jesus did? Because he didn't kill himself, Jesus had the opportunity to restore him. And so when they, he saw them on the, out there fishing, and he told them to come in, and he had the fish cooking on the sign. He said, Peter, do you love me? He was restoring Peter. And so this wisdom, knowledge, discretion, understanding would deliver us from the way of the evil man. Don't get into this thing to where you beat yourself up because you've done something wrong. You might have had a Peter moment. Uh, but always hang in there and allow God to redeem you and to restore you back to the condition that you were in. Don't take the Judas approach. Even though Judas did something that we might think of as despicable. Jesus says, I love you and I'm here to save every single person. So don't ever think that the things that you've been through, the things that you've done, the things that you may be doing right now are so bad that God is not willing to accept you and to if you return to him and trust him. Don't ever think that you're in such a bad condition that you cannot be restored by the, the God who says, I love you and I'm here to give life and love to everyone that every man should have eternal life. So it is to deliver you from the way of the evil man. And guess what? From the man that speaks forward things. Hmm. There are some people out there that's going to tell you some stuff and tell you this is the way I need to handle it. You need to handle it. There, that girl, it's all right to go out there. Go on out there and have you a good time. Go on out there and sleep with him and sleep with him. Go on, dude, you know, that, that she wants you, she, he, she wants you, and, and, and maybe even a he wants you. And they're trying to tell you and convince you that those things are okay. But God says those are the people that speak forward things like that. God will keep you from those things if you have discretion, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It will keep you from those things. And, and look what it says. Uh, so let, let's just combine verses 12 and 13. He says, to deliver thee, what? From the way of the evil man, from the man that speaks forward things, who leave the paths of uprightness. The evil man, the one who speaks forward things, they leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. So why are we listening to that? When we're trying to get our life together and we want to live in the sunshine, we want to live in, the, in the, the, the life that God has for us, why would we listen to the evil one? Wisdom knows better. Wisdom is the better way. Touch yourself and tell yourself that. Wisdom is the better way. We need to trust what God has for us because the evil man, 
the people that speak forward things, that try to get you to do the things that God wouldn't help, help you have you to do. Those people who speak perverse things that always uh, have something nasty to say, they have, the, have the potty mouths and always trying to get you to do the, the lewd and crude and the wicked. Those people trying to lead you down the wrong path, they will leave the paths of uprightness to do what? To walk in the ways of darkness. You know, <laughs> it makes me remember the old Richard Pryor saying, that he's standing around, his friends asking, well, well, what you gonna do? What, what, you, what, you, what you doing, man? What, why you standing around here? He said, I'm waiting for 11.30. What you waiting for 11.30? Everything gets started at the party starts at 11.30. You know, that was back in the day. 11.30 was the time. Everybody knew when darkness fell, that, that, that 11.30 was the time to get your groove on and get, and get out there and get into the things. And all kind of things happen because everybody else has gone home and gone to bed. But these are the things that we need to walk away from. We don't need to stay in darkness. Um, aren't you tired of having to deal with some things that are so deep and dark and depressive in your life? Don't you want to get out of some of those things? We're now in July is National Minority Mental Health Month. And we really need to focus in on our mental health because there are some things that we've always said that um, um, black people aren't, uh, don't go through depression. We, if you're depressed, then something's wrong with you. You need to get yourself together. You need to pull yourself together. No, you need to hear what God is saying. And you need to get some wise counsel. That means you may need to go to a professional. You may need to seek out some things. There may be some prescription that you need to take. And don't get so upset about uh, or worried about it if, the, if it, the first one don't work. Tell your doctor and let them adjust it and change it so it'll work for you. Because God is giving you some knowledge about these things that you can have a better understanding of your own self and you can get the healing that you need. Amen. Amen. And so when we look at this and the last thing that we have here, as he says in verse, in verse from verse 13 to 14, he's already told us that we need to get away from the evil man in verse 12, the ones who speak forward things or perverse things because they lead the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of dark darkness. But guess what else? They rejoice to do evil. They are happy to do evil things. And so that's the person that we need to get away from. And they delight in the forwardness of the wicked. And we can see in society today that we are celebrating some things that God says we should not be doing. And I'm going to leave it there for you to determine what that is. You already know. You know what it is. We're celebrating so many things when God says this is perverse. This is an abomination. And we're saying that it's okay. Now, here's the thing. And I want you to understand this clearly. That we don't look at people that are doing those things, that are acting so perverse and doing the lewd and crude things and say, you can't come and worship with us. Because the house of worship is the place for healing and restoration comes from. And so we need to be able to teach those people that are dealing with whatever it may be in their life that society says is okay. That we need to, to, to make sure that we give them the love of God. That they will hear what God says and they can receive wisdom. That they can receive the knowledge of the things that's going on, the forward things, the perverse things that they're doing, and what God truly says about it, that they can uh, exercise discretion and have understanding so that they can be delivered from the way of the evil man. I don't know if you understand that. I don't know. I hope you get that. Because we in the church too many times are saying that this is wrong and that is wrong, and we're telling them don't even come be around us. We're afraid to go out there and talk to them about what does say the Lord. And yes, yes, when people are determined to do what they want to do, they sometimes don't want to hear it. But scripture tells us what to do. When they really don't want to hear it and you're trying to give them the truth, he says, shake the dust from your feet and leave them alone. Why? God says, because then I will deal with them. I will deal with them, but you still give them the word of truth. And if they reject it, then you go on and do what, what uh, I tell you to do and leave it to me. Because a lot of times we want to see people change. We want people to change and we want to see it and we want them to prove it. And God is saying, no, uh, leave them alone because you don't know the wheat from the chaff. I mean, the wheat from the tares, excuse me. You'll pull up, some of the, pull up the wrong thing. Uh, you won't give them a chance to change. 
Uh, you, you will treat them like a Judas and you'll tell them to go out and hang themselves when Jesus is trying to restore them back to wholeness. And so it says that they leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. They rejoice to do evil and delight in the perverse things of the wicked. Their ways are crooked, verse 15, and they forward themselves in their own paths. They have their own devious paths that they go after. So we want to encourage you today that if you're out there and you love the Lord and you're really trying to get your life together, there is a God out there who loves you so much that he, is will, he has already given you the best gift that he could ever give you, and that is the sacrifice of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for your sins and for mine. And I can't tell you that uh, there's no hope for you. I'll never tell you that. Uh, and no one should ever tell anyone that there's no hope for someone. You know, we, we say that about some people. There's no hope for them. They'll never turn around. But when you go throughout Scripture, and there are people who have done some despicable things that turn their lives around. Uh, Zacchaeus uh, was one who nobody loved in the Jewish community because he was a Jew, and he was working with the Roman government, collecting taxes, taking heavy penalties on people, and he turned his life around when he saw Jesus. So anyone can have that moment that they turn their life around. So we present to you, Jesus Christ, that if you're out there and if you really, truly want to have your life preserved, you want life eternal, if you want to know the better way, wisdom has the better way, that we are introduced to you, Jesus Christ. He says, come unto me all ye that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And when we take on the yoke of Jesus Christ, uh, his yoke is easy and his burdens are light. And so we offer Christ to you uh, now that if you uh, don't want to post on Facebook as we're delivering this message today, then you can reach me at Pastor New Beginnings, H O W, at gmail.com. That's Pastor New Beginnings, H O W, at gmail.com. Or simply uh, call me at 615 473 5464. That's 615 473 5464. And once we conclude, I will post. Uh, uh, the information that I've just given to you on this account, uh, that you can see it there. And if there is anything that was said today that uh, helped you, uh, that you think of someone else that may help them, share this message with them. Uh, we are here at New Beginnings House of Worship. Uh, we are not a church that has a physical building, but we are uh, doing it over social media because God has given us a vision that there are people in all sorts of places that need to hear the truth of God's word. And we're just trying to be one of those vessels that can give you that opportunity to hear it no matter where you are. And so if you want to be a part of this ministry, you can email us and let us know as well. We would love to have you to be a part of our ministry, uh, that we have some things that we're planning to do. And we really want to focus on mental health this month. So we'll be hearing some things on uh, mental health uh, during this month as well. And we hope to have a speaker on. And we may do our Bible study too on another day doing Zoom, but we'll give you that information that you can stay tuned and listen in to us. If you love to give to this ministry, uh, we have givelify.com, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y.com. And we'll post that as well, that if you love to share anything with us uh, uh, monetarily, you can do it through that, or just simply mail it to us. And we'll post that, 3919 Kings Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37218. And we thank you and we bless you and may God continue to give you all that you need. Amen.